Hello and welcome to Run 11 Unplugged. Today's monologue is going to be about my one, the 996911. Now, you know as well as I do that this isn't the one. However, how many of us 996911 owners have had that question asked when we say we own a 911? They say, oh, is it one of those air cool ones or is it the one? Now, I have fairly thick skin when it comes to that, but it's interesting how many people actually still say that. They may not necessarily say they may say, oh, is it the bad one? Is it the ugly one? Is it the one with the crab headlights? Is it the one with the fried eggs? I must admit, it's getting very boring very quickly. This isn't going to be me telling everyone that they're wrong, we know that already. But maybe those people are just a, a little bit misinformed. Because let's be honest, how can we be negative about a model that saved Porsche as we know it? You could say the Boxster had more of a hand in that, but it was the continuation of the 911 as the 996 that really solidified Porsche being back from the brink. Obviously at the time, it was a massive departure from everything that Porsche, especially 911 fans, knew and loved different body style. Echoes the same design, but it was an entirely new body from the ground up. Nothing shared body-wise from previous cars. They moved from air-cooled to water-cooled, a move that was really future-proofing the vehicles. That Boxster that came a couple of years before, a year before, was instrumental in providing everything from the A-pillar and doors forward in design. Sands a slightly different front bumper, but those headlights, I think they're gorgeous. And the reason that the headlights were the way they were, how quick they were to fit on the production line. They wanted to make good cars very quickly and efficiently, taking those build elements they learned from Toyota. And then when it was released, no one could say a bad word about how the car drove. Evo magazine gave it Evo car of the year. 98. The following year, the GT3 won Car of the Year. The following year, the Turbo 996 won Car of the Year. So these cars weren't just forward thinking, they were making a name for themselves. And that's another thing to add. Up until the end of production on the 996, it was the greatest selling 911 ever, with over 175,000 units sold between 97 and 2005. That's staggering when you consider it is a car that in its early infancy cost well over 60,000 pounds. Truly the everyman's luxury sports car. Yet here we are in 2020 with people, much like myself I suppose, putting a negative title behind the 996 on a YouTube video. But I know those folks aren't saying it because they believe it. They know like I do it's probably the best 911 ever. I said it, but going back on point. So where did all the negativity come from? Because let's be honest, it's gotta have come from somewhere. You know, that's a good question. Especially with all the positivity within the media, what they were suggesting, how good the car was, the great rave reviews. the rave reviews, negativity is going to have to come from somewhere. The focus point was always those lights, and we've already covered the rationale and the reason behind it. Saving time means saving money. 19 seconds to fit a headlight versus a headlight here and then the indicator separate. It's no contest. You're going to want to cut costs somewhere, and these minor little things are going to help business. But they were very different compared to everything else. They weren't the regular circles that everyone was used to. They were on point with the 993 if you look at how swoopy and smooth the overall car was. But again, it's not just the angle that they rest at, it's the overall design. And anything that changes, and people are very afraid of change as we're well aware, we're going through the biggest change in the world as we speak. But those people, nervous for change, didn't like how dramatic that was. And we all know if you have a few people that shout as loudly as possible about anything, people are going to listen. 
Another thing to add, I've yet to meet someone who's driven a 996 who says it's a bad car. In fact, the contrary. I've heard people say incredible things about the 996. Someone I met at oil called last year had a 996, now has a 964, and he stated the 996 is a better drive than the 964. Sure, the 964 is going to win your internet, you're going to get a lot of thumbs up from people, you're going to have a lot of love thrown at you, but are you really buying a car for other people? Are you actually purchasing a vehicle to please others? Have a word with yourself. That's not what it's about. You've got to go out there and buy the best car for you, whether that's budget driven, whether that is uh, about how you feel about how the car drives, whatever it is. Hey, do you know what? If you want to please others, then go for it, man. You know, there's... if that's the be all and end all of why you buy stuff and why you do things, if you want the latest creps, if you want the fanciest watch, if all you care about is what the next man is and you just want to get one up on him, then all for you. But I'm telling you now, that's a <laughs> way to live. Back on point, the 996 is one of the greatest driver's cars ever. Even last year, an Evo magazine, Evo Car of the Year, they revisited the 996. And again, they said how great it was. They didn't relinquish not even half a star on it. It's still five out of five. And it shows. Best visibility, incredible steering feel, great performance. Yes, similar horsepower to a lot of super hatches, a lot less than some as well. We have a Golf R at home, and that has the same power output as this. And that is a very, very fast car to drive very easily. Yet, yeah. even at 66 miles an hour on the motorway, this feels 10 times more special than any Euro box. I say that with love. If you're one of these people that has an opinion about the 996 and it's a strong negative one, okay, great, well done. But tell me something, have you actually driven one? Because if you have, and you still feel that way, great. If you haven't, shut the f*** up. Too many people's opinions come from other people's opinions, but don't actually know how to make an opinion themselves. What are you doing? Research, find out. Ask your friends. If you know someone with a 996 and you don't drive like a douchebag, ask them for a drive. Go out as a passenger if you can't. I'll tell you now, you will absolutely fall in love head over heels with this car. Easily the best car I've ever owned and I'll never ever get rid of it. I have too much love for the 996 and I will guarantee you, the moment you drive one, so will you. Thank you for watching Ren 11 Unplugged. You're going to want to know the story about my 996, so make sure you click up there. You're also going to want to know where to go if you want to have the best chassis adjustment in the UK. That's where you go this way. And if you love what you see, press that subscription button right there.